This is Witchbase News for Friday the 27th of May 2022 ...I'm Commander Burr. In Elite Dangerous News this week ...there's a huge revelation as the Azimuth Saga nears its conclusion and we speculate on what may be around the corner. There's a short delay to update 12 and we've the latest news on the Galactic Exploration Catalogue. To ensure you don't miss any of our videos hit like and subscribe and remember to click the little bell icon and select all notifications and if you'd like to help directly support this channel you can also join our Patreon via the link in the video description. Frontier announced this week that the first of three upcoming updates ...update 12 which was scheduled for the end of May is to experience a small delay and has now been rescheduled for the 7th of June. There is a raft of public holidays in the next two weeks including an extra weekend one for the Queen's Jubilee celebrations and the patch will now drop on the Tuesday after those bank holidays are squared away. One quick note as well Frontiers regular Elite Dangerous livestream Frameshift Live is on a fortnightly schedule now. There was no stream this week meaning that next Thursday is stream day. The Galactic Exploration Catalogue that is part of the toolset at edastro.com was officially released from beta test this week and is now available for everyone to use. The Galactic Exploration Catalogue quickly jumped into the void left by the recent retirement of the Galactic Mapping Project. The tool has an ever expanding list of sites and scenes to visit all over the galaxy that are voted on by the community as well as a team of curators and using the site you can filter and sort the submissions to find something near you that you might like to visit. The team have also just added a new rare filter option that will produce as the name suggests the rarer points of interest in the catalogue. Included within this new option you'll find such gems as a shepherd moon that orbits just 79 kilometers from the outer edge of its parent planet's rings, close binary ringed earth like worlds or a single system that contains 14 different types of flora. Gotta catch them all. You'll find a link to the Galactic Exploration Catalogue in the description below this video. This next article is chock full of spoilers for the current ongoing narrative in the game so if you're sensitive to such things consider this fair warning. Still here? Here we go then. After the regular Thargs Day scheduled server bounce yesterday some commanders who had previously aided the Aegis Xeno Defence Agency started to receive inbox messages in game from Professor Alba Tezro. Tezro is the former head of research at the now defunct Aegis and is a proponent of interspecies communication. According to the communique from Professor Tezro she has been herself the recipient of a secretive message which appears to have come from someone who originated at or had access to the Oaken Point facility in HIP 26716. More on that in a moment. The message simply supplied a set of galactic coordinates and the words ...who is salvation. The galactic coordinates led to the DG Canum Venaticorum system which is only just over 25 light years from Sol. Upon arrival in the system commanders discovered an abandoned INRA installation on body A4A and when investigated the installation revealed fully voice acted audio logs. The logs were recorded around 150 years ago by one Caleb Witcherly the then vice president of ...wait for it ...Azimuth Biochemicals. The logs describe Azimuth's working alongside INRA the shadowy anti-xeno military organisation that deployed the mycoid biological weapon at the end of the first Thargoid war. They do a fantastic job of referencing and weaving between existing lore in the game to describe Azimuth and Caleb Witcherly's direct involvement in those events. The events Witcherly is describing can themselves be downloaded as logs and have existed in the game for some significant time. If you visited HIP 12099 and heard the recordings from Commander Jameson's crash site and the logs from the rather grim INRA installation there called The Stack then you'll know exactly the events it's referencing. 
It's also worth listening to the logs recovered from the INRA installation at HIP 16824 at Carmichael Point. These messages immediately precede the events around the demise of Commander Jameson. I'll come back to that in a moment. As the Azimuth saga has evolved over the last 18 plus months in the game a number of individuals have entered the story whose identity and whereabouts have yet to be precisely deciphered. There is of course the shadowy individual known only as Salvation but of particular note there is also Subject D2 whose story can be heard through the logs downloaded from the Oaken Point installation at HIP 26716 as part of Project Seraph. You may remember that D2 was part of a sequence of experiments to physically integrate a human into a Thargoid ship. Most of the test subjects died and the experiments at Oaken at least were only partially successful but D2 did survive the ordeal and in fact managed to escape with the assistance of one Commander Highford. The logs seem to originate around 3303 and close by making reference to an individual called the witch and how they would be displeased with the lack of progress. The logs uncovered yesterday are, remember, from around 150 or so years ago. Caleb Witcherly makes note in those logs that he's interested in using progenitor cells to extend his life as the anti-Thargoid work he is involved in will likely take longer than a human lifespan and, at the very end of the logs, Caleb notes that his subordinates have started referring to him as the witch. Whilst Caleb's identity as the witch can no longer be in doubt it is perhaps the final sentence of his recordings that leave the biggest impression. In the recording Caleb Witcherly assigns himself the mantle of protecting humanity against a future Thargoid threat of his own prediction believing, quite rightly, that they would survive the mycoid bioweapon that Inra deployed against them as a species at least. His chilling final words are if I must be humanity's salvation then so be it. Whilst it's not explicitly stated there is certainly a credible implication here that Caleb Witcherly, Azimuth Biochemicals, The Witch and Salvation are all one and the same. And further, despite Azimuth's apparent absorption by the rival corporation Pharmasapien, Witcherly continued and indeed it seems continues to this day in the Elite Dangerous Galaxy in some form. I say in some form quite deliberately. At this point if he's still alive thanks to extended progenitor cell usage Caleb the Witch Witcherly would likely be something like 200 years old. A life of that artificially extended longevity lived in the single minded pursuit of one goal the complete xenocide of the Thargoid species would, I would imagine, leave no small mark on an individual's psyche. Lest we forget Hundreds of individuals from humanity's joint military organisations have resigned their collective commissions to join under the banner of Salvation's crusade to protect humanity from the Thargoid threat. Salvation has access to megaships and to advanced technology. He has however demonstrated no recent ability to kill Thargoids, only drive them from a system. There is clearly another voice at play in all this. Professor Tezro received their tip off yesterday from an individual using a signature that originated from Oaken Point where Project Seraph attempted to merge a human into a Thargoid ship and where the as yet unfound Subject D2 escaped from. The witch was behind Project Seraph. It's logical that D2 would, having escaped, have no love for the witch and if, as seems the case, the witch is salvation by another name then unveiling salvation's true nature and origins to a recently hoodwinked galaxy would be in her interests. When all this started happening yesterday the official Elite Dangerous Twitter account tweeted a garbled image that contained Morse code. The Morse code produced a string of nonsensical letters but when run through a common decryption key it produced a slightly garbled version of the following message. I am the truth. Aegis will not save you. Trust in your salvation. One final point, the logs from yesterday, Jameson's crash site and the Carmichael point logs all make reference to one thing. Huge Thargoid motherships what they refer to as hive ships. Indeed Carmichael Point was even destroyed by one. 
We know the Azimuth Saga is drawing to a conclusion soon and we know from Frontier that they are currently testing something in game that in their words they have never attempted before. That something could of course be anything but this most recent mention yet again of Thargoid Hive vessels that all then links to previous mentions in the game lore of the same huge Hive vessels more than has our interest peaked. It's long been widely suspected that Thargoid on foot combat is in Odyssey's future. If that is indeed the case who's to say it takes place on a planet surface? Could it be that we'll find ourselves boarding these vessels after Salvation is done jamming a pole into the middle of the Danger Daffodils nest and that that thing is what Frontier are currently prepping to roll out? Could we be witnessing witch created human hybrid Thargoid vessels or could Tezero be about to open up a new era of interspecies communication? Whatever the case it seems we'll likely know one way or another in the next few months. If you want to get fully up to speed on any or all of this then it's still in the game. The locations I've spoken about today are all in the description below as is a link to Frontiers official summary of the entirety of the Azimuth Saga so far. Do you think we're going to see Thargoid Hive vessels in the future? Do you believe Azimuth, Salvation and the Witch are all the same person? Are you at this very moment fashioning yourself a new tinfoil hat? Let us know in the comments below. That's it for now. Thanks very much for watching. We'll be back later this week with more videos. Until then ….o7 CMDRs follow the greens on the way out and do keep clear of the toast rack. We very much look forward to seeing you next time.